and welcome to a very special episode of the Sports for Dummies podcast. My name is Hope Ellen. No Lewis today. No Lewis with the university work, but I have got someone very special who's joining me on this episode. Now, she is the eighth in the world for the Functional Fitness 2022, the World Bench Press Champion, CrossFit to semi-finalist 2022, sixth CrossFit Master in the world 2022, and a coach. It's the incredible Ruta Ledreitner. Did I say it right? I said it wrong? <laughs> no, it, it was wrong. It, Ledreitner, but <laughs> it's yeah, fine. <laughs> we practiced before. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a very busy lady. You've got so many plates that are spinning. Um, and we've been trying to arrange this for quite some time, haven't we? Yes, definitely. For, probably for a couple of months, we were kind of trying to arrange it. <laughs> Life always gets in the way, but I'm pleased that we're here. Um, and actually, you've just come back from something very exciting, haven't you? You've been at the Masters World Functional Fitness Championship. Tell me all about that. Uh, that's right. So the the championships were in Aruba, um, obviously for all different age uh, groups. And uh, it was the competition was for three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, every day it was two different workouts that we needed to do. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> and I came uh, finished eighth. Brilliant. Yes. What's it like going to all these different countries and competing. I bet you meet so many people. Yeah, it's it's amazing to meet different people from all over the world. Uh, and I know I actually met and I know uh, a lot of them from different countries. So it's nice when you meet again them, you go to next year to the competition and you meet again and you kind of, they are friends, they understand you and everything. It, it's really, really, uh, and probably a little bit different than then we were well actually i started when i was only 34 years old but it's different with younger ones and older ones probably older ones are not as stressed as younger ones Why so is that? it's a lot calmer a lot nicer i don't know maybe probably more experienced people not not taking as much into well yeah whatever will happen obviously everybody wants to win but whatever happens you support each other and uh, doesn't matter so everybody more relaxed i imagine as well that maybe in your personal life friends and family who don't do what you do don't necessarily understand it whereas these people who are competing it's kind of like a, a community you all know what it's like the sacrifices the training Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and initially, when when I started, even my husband wasn't kind of supporting me. It, it was like, oh, you're spending so so much time. You are not at home. You are somewhere else. You are doing your training, and uh, yeah, and other people. Well, well, you are old enough. Like again, it's that age. People think, okay, you you are not like twenty years old. So what were you expecting? And you know why 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 you are spending all that time? Basically, that's how pe people are thinking. So how did you win your husband over? I think he just didn't have a choice because I, I said I, I like it <laughs> and I still was kept going to my, my training sessions. So yes, just got used to it. And now obviously he supports me. That could have stopped a lot of people actually, couldn't it? If they thought that it yeah. was, if they thought, oh, I'm doing this, I like it, but my family is suffering or mm. that they feel like they're suffering. That could have made someone say, oh, no, no, I'm not doing it. So good on you for sticking out. Ah, thank you. I, I think it made me feel, well, training makes me feel very, very happy. I feel more relaxed after it. And uh, it was my probably escape from everything in a way. So that's why I, no way I was going to give up. So let's go back to the beginning of kind of your life and we'll go to your yeah. childhood because looking on your website you've described yourself as someone who was quite shy and found it difficult to communicate why was that I don't know I it, it was from early age from when I was little I always used to hide behind my mom I was so um no confident whatsoever I was I don't know it's just that's the way I was and uh, I grew up and still as an adult I wasn't very kind of confident person as well until I started lifting weights that's when I changed and kind of got my confidence um, 
got happy the way I look and how people are looking at me and everything. So I think that's when everything changed. It's like you found your superpower. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so were you a sporty child at all? Well, no, I d- didn't do anything in sports, but I was very strong all my life and very athletic, let's say. Yeah, at school, I always was the first in my class in PE. I I always kind of was doing and I was successful in, in PE, whatever I was doing. But uh, the only thing as a child I did... Um, gymnastics for half a year and that's about it then then I was six years old and that's it and nothing nothing else didn't do any other sports other than PE at school and I suppose if you were struggling with your confidence you wouldn't necessarily want to put yourself out there well correct yeah yeah so you mentioned about being 34 when you discovered CrossFit and you've mentioned how that's quite a, a mature age to go into it and start something new so when did the fitness journey begin? Talk to me about that. Why? What made you at 34 think, I'm going to do that? Well, it, that even wasn't a CrossFit that I started. Uh, okay. Then I had my second son. Uh, and uh, after that, I decided that I want to do something. Obviously, I wasn't happy after, you know, I gave birth. I wasn't happy the way I looked, by how my body looked. And it always was a, a battle in, in the life, uh, to lose weight, to look slimmer, to look better. And I think after that, I started looking what I could do, where I could go, because normal commercial gyms, I never enjoyed. I I used to go for a month and I would quit. It was just too boring for me. Never, never enjoyed, so never lasted in them. Uh, Running wasn't something I liked as well, so started looking what I could do and I found outdoors military boot na- uh, boot boot camps mm. so that's my first bit that I started doing going to those uh, it was two three times a week and I probably did for a year and when I got bored again I wasn't getting out anything of it and I started looking for something else again and that's how I I think I I saw one of the girls who used to go to those boot camps um, Instagram or, or on Facebook that she was doing jumping on boxes and lifting some weights. And that's how I found out about CrossFit. And I thought, you know what, I would love to try that. It's something different that I probably would enjoy. And then uh, I approached her and asked where she's doing that. So she told where she was doing and that's how I joined. And that's how my, well, basically how I started in CrossFit. Amazing, the power of social media, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I want to touch on this bit you mentioned about being kind of concerned about your body image. Um, mm. I know you mentioned after having children, but you also said throughout your whole life, you've kind of not been happy with how you've looked. You've struggled with confidence. Do you think, where does that come from? Is it because society kind of hammering this kind of female, you need to look like this, you should do this thing that's kind of shifting nowadays or Uh or something else? No, I think it it is society, but also, well, probably it is mainly society that you should look in in certain way, that you should be slim, that you, you know, you're a woman, you can't be big and so on. So... Uh, all my life, I was trying to be slim and, and look good and lose weight and then kind of was putting myself into those brackets that I have to be under certain weight. Uh, so always what kind of even under eating, not eating enough very often just just to lose that weight. Even I used to not have energy at all because I wasn't eating enough, but I still would, oh, no, I need I need to lose weight. I need to be slimmer. I need so, so yeah. So always been a battle. And then obviously I didn't know anything about nutrition or, or training. So it was just mainly food. Okay, let's eat less and I will be, you know, will look better. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a photograph that you posted um, comparing yourself at the start of your journey about 10 years ago compared to now. Yeah. And the difference, obviously, is that the physicalness, you can see your body looks more muscular now. It looks much fitter and healthier. But your face, you look so much happier. You look more right. confident. You're standing with your, your shoulders back. You're looking kind of 
like reborn almost to this new confident version of yourself and your face is glowing now compared to then. So you must feel, if you look back at that old version, you must feel sorry for that person almost because you're just like, oh, no, you're doing it all wrong. Bless your heart. <laughs> Sort of thing. <laughs> well, that's right. And and you're absolutely right. I posted that picture and I looked myself, oh my God, in that first picture, I'm so, so shy, standing yeah. there all all kind of curled in. And then in the second time, I'm I'm happy, I'm confident, and as you say, shining. And yeah, it and all that was down to lifting weights. Basically, when I started lifting weights, that changed the way I think about myself. Let's talk about the misconceptions of a female doing this mm-hmm. sport because, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but lifting weights, I know that women sometimes have to be careful lifting heavy things because of all of our bits and bobs inside, our ovaries and all that stuff. Are there mis- common misconceptions that you have faced that you can actually say, no, that's not actually true. If you do it this way, it doesn't do anything. Well, I think that the main one is that uh, as a lot of women think that as soon as you will start lifting weights, obviously you will become very big. <laughs> you won't, because for for women it's so difficult to grow muscle. It's it, it doesn't grow like for men, so it takes time, it takes years until you grow that muscle and you have to eat properly. It it all it's not only lifting weights. So yeah, uh, unless obviously you are taking some you know drugs. Um, <laughs> gear using then yeah those you know in bodybuilding a lot a majority of the people are using drugs and then women become very big and you know muscular so but that's totally different why is that in terms of female men is it just a biological makeup yeah it's uh, the difference because um well women are just different uh, don't have um what it's called now um I can't remember how to explain, but yeah, basically it's just the differences in in, um, in women and men bodies, so we can't grow muscles so quickly. Well, basically we have less testosterone, so that's one of the main things. Talk to me about kind of other things that you do, because, oh, sorry, <clears throat> it's not just the, the lifting of weights. I've seen videos of you walking around doing handstands. <laughs> yeah, but, I... but that's <laughs> that's part of the the CrossFit, isn't it? Uh, CrossFit is so varied, and there are so many movements. Uh, I mean, it's not only lifting weights; it's uh, gymnastics, it's running, it's uh, all work on on different um, machines like bikes, uh, rowing, uh, ski eggs, and so on. And yeah, and part of part of it it's handstand walks we have to do so uh, yeah that's why it's crazy when i think i never thought that being like 40 years old as i am i, I will be walking on my hands <laughs> <laughs> and also that explains why you don't get bored of this one because you've tried the other you've tried the gym you've tried the the boot camps you got bored but this one you're not going to because it's so varied exactly and it's so so many movements that you need to to learn uh, it's not that you suddenly okay i went in and i can do it. it it takes so much time so you keep keep learning all different movements and that's why you never get bored talk to me about your training regime because you've mentioned that you've got a husband you've got two sons as well how do you manage everything i think now it's a lot easier because my my sons are quite old one is uh, away at university at 21 year 21 years old uh, the other one is 15 years old so it, it doesn't require so much time as it used to uh, and i train five times a week for 3 hours around 3 hours mm. so yeah in total like 15 hours per week and what do the boys make of you doing this and competing um in a way i kind of want them to to do some sort of sports whatever they want but because i want them to do especially younger one uh, don't like me forcing him kind of mm-hmm. it's he's like a rebel at, at the moment whatever i tell him to do he doesn't want to do but still i otherwise he would just sit on, on the computer all day long so i told him you do some sport or you won't have a computer. So 
he goes to CrossFit twice a week as well, so he does CrossFit. Even he does say that he doesn't want to do, he still enjoys. He always finishes the session and he feels very happy. Yeah, well, it releases those endorphins, doesn't it? And you never have That's a workout right. that you regret. Uh, no, no. Well, I mean, sometimes there are workouts that are very hard and yes. kind of pushes you <laughs> to the limit. But other than that, yeah, you you feel happy after. And have you ever moved to gyms? Have you ever found that maybe a gym that you were at doing the, the CrossFit wasn't so good for you and you've, you've moved to another one or have you always stayed at the same? No, I've been to a few um, gyms, but it wasn't because the gyms were not good. It was because at one of the gyms I used to train all the time on my own. I, I mean, other people were around, but I had to do my own program. And it becomes very difficult to push yourself, to be on your own all the time. So I found people who are doing uh, the same program with me. So we are doing training together. So it's a lot easier than on your own on, all the time. So that's why I moved to different gym. I was going to ask you later on in the interview, but it's now a good time really, um, about the kind of mental side of it, because you've got to have that resilience. And I imagine sometimes, like we all do when we're doing something, you might have a little voice come in saying, oh, give up, just stop. You can't do any more of this. So you have to kind of, force your way through that do you find that being with other people is the main contrib contributor to helping you keep going or is there something else no I think my main well now obviously being with other people it helps but the main contributor for me is at the well Earlier than I started at the beginning, obviously, of the CrossFit, it was different to what it is now. Now it is that I don't want to lose all the gains I already have. Mm. That's the scariest thing in my life now that, oh, my God, if I stop, if I won't train, I will lose everything I worked so hard for so many years. So that's what keeps me going. Obviously, the competitions as well, because after being for so many years, I want to I still want to compete and I know if I don't put work in, I won't be able to achieve anything. So preparing for the competition obviously helps as well. You mentioned at the beginning, sorry. yeah, at, at the beginning, sorry, uh, of, of the CrossFit, I think it was just pushing myself and, and my body and see what I can achieve more than anything at the beginning of my journey. You mentioned earlier on about kind of uh, being obsessive almost about how, how you looked in terms of your body and not being happy and mm -hmm. not eating properly and all of those things. Do you think it's now an obsession too, but in a more positive way? Because you mentioned how kind of it scares you, the idea that if you stop, everything's going to be lost. It, would you describe that as being a bit obsessed as well? Uh, probably, yes. Yeah. But uh, I mean... Unless I decide that I don't want to compete, then probably it wouldn't be that scary if I lose a little bit. But still, the, the thought that all that work, all those hours, um, if I stop, I would lose. I would lose everything and I would have to start again putting all, all that. I don't want, I feel, I feel happy. I feel happy the way I look, uh, feel happy in what I do and uh, what it gives to me. So I just don't want to stop. <laughs> and well, food. obviously there are, there are moments when it's very, very difficult. Uh, you are tired or whatever the reason. Sometimes it is difficult to push, but you just have to, to listen to your body. Sometimes you have to stop or, or miss a, a gym just because you are too tired. Yeah, it's it's really important to listen to your body in, no, matter, no matter what you do in life. Mm. I mean, sometimes if you're f feeding yourself rubbish food, your body's almost screaming out for some broccoli, isn't it? If you listen to yeah. it carefully. And food is a big part of, of your life, isn't it? You post oh, your your wonderful breakfast that you make. The There was a, a salmon omelette that I saw on your page that's now given me a real big craving for a salmon <laughs> omelette. <laughs> right. um, Talk to me about kind of your relationship with food and what what you've learned. Right. So at the beginning, when I started CrossFit, I thought, okay, so I can eat now. I am training a lot. I can eat whatever. I will look good because I train a lot. 
and I was so wrong because <laughs> again I was under eating then I started um, I got a coach who coached me through nutrition initially so what, how much I needed to eat and what to eat but to fuel my body properly for the sessions uh, and I was massively under eating because I Obviously, in the sessions, I normally burn like a thousand calories as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot. So on top of that, I need to eat more than the normal in a normal day on a normal people without gym. Uh, around a day, you have to eat two thousand calories. But if I burn a, a, a thousand, so it's anyway. When I calculated, I needed to eat three thousand calories just to maintain my you know strength and everything. And that again had my his own its own challenges because it was so many calories that I struggled to eat initially. So I had to find a way how how to eat so many calories and um, it, well found a way. Uh, started eating three thousand calories and my body changed. Even I was eating a lot more than before. My body became leaner. Mm -hmm. But because I was eating good, proper food and was getting a lot of protein and everything, it became leaner. Which And so it's strange, isn't it, when you think, oh, you're eating a lot more, but your body looks better than before. And you're thinking, oh, I've been starving myself for no good reason because I haven't yeah. been getting the results that I wanted. Um, talk to me about kind of jumping up to 3000 calories you said that you struggled and you had to find a way mm. what was that way did you do it slowly uh, no I started just uh, experimenting what what foods to eat started more taking foods uh, in liquid form because it was easier to consume uh, just uh, just kind of trying to, was still getting those 3000 calories from the beginning even it was very hard and initially my stock I used to to feel very full at the end of the day and I was eating every two hours basically every two hours just to get all that food in <laughs> um yeah and, and eventually I found a way which food suits me which uh, has more calories that to consume more obviously the good food not not that I would go you know and eat pizza obviously I would get a lot of calories but that's not 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 the way to do um yes yeah, just just by experimenting by what 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 works the best for me and you know how to eat how to to get the best calories even my my breakfast use and still is like around 800 calories for breakfast does your family eat the same food no <laughs> no no why not i have to prepare well some sometimes we are but uh, i have to prepare uh, for myself because I eat so so much and so often uh, I have to prepare that food for myself uh, and obviously we are more relaxed we don't need to eat the same food and you know as as we are they like some some sweet or some pizzas or so on and very often they eat let's say if they will buy pizza I wouldn't eat it or would have just a little like half a little slice and that's it uh yeah so very often it's different food and let's move on to talking about your own business because that is something that you've thrown yourself into as well and without that confidence that you developed from discovering this love mm. for the crossfit you may not have ever done so what is what is the business talk to me in your own words about that so basically how initially I started just working with individuals, uh, so coaching nutrition and then giving exercise packages to, to those people, but I could only work with so many people. Uh, so I decided to start working with companies. So go, so I do a, a couple of things. I go to companies, do mot motivational speeches and nutrition speeches. Um, so whatever they, they want to hear about. And the other part I offer to, to companies uh, exercise and nutrition packages. So again, like for individuals, but it's for, for people in the mm -hmm. companies. So and and it helps uh, all all that helps mental health, 
uh, reduce, you know, retainability of those people, reduce sicknesses and so on. So a lot of benefits to companies. You've also um, got your own supplements, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a protein powder. Uh, just just one flavor at the moment, coconut flavor. And uh, yeah, so selling that. How difficult is it to start doing that? It's not difficult as, as long as you have money. <laughs> you can find, obviously, with this, um, there are a lot of manufacturers in UK. It's UK is based um, uh, where I bought from. So found the factory, agreed what I want, to how I want. They designed my label and everything. And uh, yeah, so ordered from them and that's how I started. Because um, I'm saying it's not easy because... Well, it is easy and it's not. As long as you have money, you can buy anything, but you have to buy a certain amount of that protein powder. It's not that you can buy one or two. Well, of course, there are companies who sell, you can buy just one or two, but the prices are different. What makes yours different to others on the market? I think it's because it's a, a we a protein, uh, oh, it it's absorbed very quickly uh, and it doesn't have a lot of fat or carbohydrates in, in it. So it's pure protein powder, which can be taken and, and uh, by a lot of people and just to help to get to get that protein intake um, daily because a lot of people are not getting enough protein per day. And I imagine the struggles that you had in jumping up the calories and mm. switching to drinking some of your meals has probably helped you understand that people struggle to get their intake. Yes, yeah. And uh, I mean, and why protein is important, a lot of people think that protein is needed only for those who are exercising. Even when you're not exercising, if you're not eating proper food, and majority are not, you're not getting enough protein and what protein does, it, it helps you feel more satiated. Uh, so you don't crave other unhealthy food and so on. So it just, uh, if you're not getting for food, so how do you get it? So that helps to get your protein intake uh, just by using protein powder. Something else that you're starting or you have started is your new radio show. Talk to me about uh -huh. that. Yes, so obviously um, I've got my own show on, the, on Aspen Weight Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, they invited me for an interview. Uh, so I went to them, visited, had that interview, and then they offered me to, to have my own uh, radio show, and which is very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. There's a brand new thing to, to try. Are you nervous or excited? Uh, initially, maybe I was a little bit nervous, but I'm more more than anything, I'm excited because I can share what I know and to teach other people how to do and what to do, uh, all what I think about wellness um, in general, what, you know, about nutrition, about exercise, about supplements, about anything, about mental health. So it's all, all in that. So I can talk about anything and that. That's the topic that excites me and I'm very passionate about. So, yeah, I'm happy. And when can people tune in if, they, if they're listening to this and thinking, oh, yeah, I want to listen to that? Yeah, it's, so it's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on Aspen Weight Radio and it's uh, called The School of Wellness, my show. So, Good name. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, and then just to end the interview today, I've got a couple more questions. I know we've we've touched on this throughout the interview but I kind of want just a, a powerful one word answer almost so how has CrossFit changed your life Ruta? I think it changed completely uh, as I mentioned obviously before it gave me so much confidence uh, I love the way I look the way I feel the way and what I achieved obviously I never even dreamed that at that age I will go to any competitions worldwide competitions and even become a world champion so I think yeah it, it completely changed my life and finally, what is the best thing about CrossFit? That it's varied and very supportive by people. When you go, you go to classes and everybody is so supportive. So you are never on your own and uh, yeah, and you are never bored of it. And it obviously teaches you 
all different movements and flexibility and mobility so you work on on a lot of things uh, so it basically a functional fitness so which you use every day well some of some of movements are not but uh... well Ruta thank you so much for your time today um, and congratulations on all the achievements that you've accomplished this year because you've been busy and it, it's really nice to see that all the hard work and the sacrifice that you're putting in is, is paying off for you. So congratulations. All right. Thank you, Hopen. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. And that concludes this special episode of the Sports for Dummies podcast. Thank you so much for listening and watching as per usual. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and keep a lookout for new episodes that will be dropping very, very shortly. Thank you for all the support and lots of love.